from multiple locations via the miracle of Skype. It's the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailing, featuring dangerous Dan Margetta and Brian Schmidt. LTN is a caller-driven program, and your participation is encouraged by calling 414-421-7901. That's 414-421-7901. Now, the creator and host of the Fastest Hour in Radio, Todd Bailing. Welcome to the program. Glad you could join us this Sunday morning. Todd Bailing in Phoenix, Arizona. My three partners are spread out. A couple of them are back in the good old snowing Wisconsin area. Dan Margetta in St. Francis. Hey, man, is it snowing by you yet? Oh, yeah, it's snowing here. Last time I saw snow, I was sitting on a plane ready to get out of here and go to Phoenix. I don't have that option today. <laughs> no, you're back now for a while. Uh, Brian Schmidt of Ootsburg, Wisconsin, who usually uh, salts roads for the city of Sheboygan. Right? Yeah, they didn't call me. New guys must be doing that today. That's a good job for them. So, <laughs> to break yeah, them it's going to be gone by the end of the week. It's supposed to be 50 here next week, so it's not going to be here long. But so there's I'm no sure it'll be back. Here, right. And uh, PJ Noodleman, who uh, the good news is she's in Florida. The bad news is she's not at a hotel. She's calling us from the hauler in a parking lot at Five Flags Speedway in Pensacola. Hi, PJ. Hey. Hi there. Actually, Tobe just went to go get the rental car, so then we'll all be able to get to the place that we're staying this week. Um, you spent yesterday, in the last few days, uh, at the Freedom Factory, which is a pretty fancy name for a racetrack that used to be called DeSoto Speedway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Tobe actually won at DeSoto Speedway with Steve Holzhausen back in the day. Oh, Nice. And uh, this uh, Billy Bigley Memorial race that they had there yesterday, uh, apparently he was number 28 because it was yep. a 128 lap feature. It's kind of a quick feature, isn't it? It was. And it was a four tire race. So it was actually, if you talk to any of the guys, they love those. It was American racers uh, where the tires and everybody likes those because they have good wear. Um, huh. So, yeah. But, yeah, it was a great race. Um, Johnny Sauter was up front for most of it, but he lost it uh, to, uh, yeah, he just uh, was on the outside, and the outside lane uh, was not going. I don't know why he ended up getting out there, but he did. Mm -hmm. uh, Ty Majeski ended up uh, finishing ninth after um, got hit in the wall from a, a lap car. It was on his inside, basically, and got him loose. Oh, it sure seemed like a one-groove track, Paige. Yeah, it was. Sorry, I'm a little out of it. I'm really tired. <laughs> but anyway, the winner of it was uh, Jet Noland. Um, he's, uh, his family's had a team that Stephen Nassie actually raced for for a while, too. But he won it. Sauter was second. Derek Cross was sixth. Luke Fenhouse was eighth. Ty was ninth. And Pauly Schaefer Jr. was also down there, and he ran and finished 12th. And Jeff Storm was actually, he was pretty fast. He had some he good was. speed. Good. He was he was exciting watching Storm. He went right to the, he was like fourth after about what did you think, Dan? About twenty five, thirty laps, maybe. Yeah, he was coming in the beginning. He was fast all all weekend down there, even practice and and qualifying. He looked like he had a pretty good car. Uh, some mechanical problems. He thought something happened in the rear end, kind of put him out. But uh, they all knew he was there. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. Michael Bilderback made the trip down. Uh, but did you say he had an engine issue? Yeah, engine issues, and everybody's like, well, you should just rent another engine. It's not so easy to write checks for things like that. I don't think everybody uh, understands that. But I was a little amazed Bubba Pollard was not there. Apparently, his wife had a baby. I guess there's a good excuse why he wasn't yeah, there. Yeah, they just had a baby, like, Thanksgiving, I believe. So that's, you know, two days ago. So, yeah, uh, no, there's a lot of time he could have been there. Come on. I'm sorry. I whisper that when I talk smart like yep. that. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, it's not really well we talk stupid, you know. Uh, so Bubba wasn't there. But uh, what a nice contingent of Wisconsin guys. And, you know, they all ran good. Derek Krause came to the front. Uh, uh, Majeski, you know, went to the front before he had uh, his issues. Stormy was up front. I mean, it was pretty awesome. And Johnny Sauter actually dominated the race and would have won it if not for a late race caution. And you guys were um, dodging raindrops much of the night too, right? It was kind of misting. I didn't, I didn't think it was too bad. 
But, yeah, it was misting a little bit. So uh, many, not all, many of the folks that raced uh, last night at, uh, where was that place anyway? Uh, Bradenton, Bradenton, Bradenton. Yeah, uh, Bradenton, took, Florida. Took the trip north, and what is that, about three, four hours maybe, or longer than that even? Six. Six hours? <laughs> Florida and Illinois are a lot alike. They're long-ass states. Uh, it seems like you can never get out of them, but one of them you want to get out, and the other one you don't. Right. Uh, uh, so you guys made the trip overnight, and you're yep. sitting in the parking lot with the hauler at Five Flags. So Correct. And we're not the only one here. There's a lot of other haulers that are already here, too. Uh, the actual seating for the Snowball Derby is sold out. If you're kicking around, whether you think you want to take the drive down there, you better buy tickets. I don't Do they have scalpers outside of uh, Five Flags? I, I have my dollars. I don't know. I don't, th- I don't think I'd be buying a ticket off of somebody out in the parking lot. Yeah, yeah I, I, got a, I got a ticket for you. Yeah, well, uh, who hasn't bought tickets that way? Not so much for races, or at least short track races. So, uh, interesting. It turned out to be a pretty damn good show. It was televised, and apparently they uh, got over-televised, uh, streamed. You know, when I say televised, I really mean streamed on some of these things, and I should more than likely uh, make a uh, a difference there so people understand that it wasn't on your television unless you streamed through your TV, right? So it, uh, it is sold out at the Snowball Derby, but you will be able to watch. Dan, where, what is it uh, being going to be oh, shown on? on? Racing America. I know it gets confusing with so many streaming companies out there. Last night was on Pit Road TV. Snowball Derby will be on Racing America. There's a bunch of them out there, and uh, you know they're all trying to to secure rights for big time races. That's, that's just like a short track, you know, where, where a special event makes your season. It's kind of the same thing for these streaming companies. I mean, these big events kind of make their year. And they fight over it, you know, and, and they bring their own crews in there. But they don't need a hell of a. It's not like actual televising, right? Uh, Dan, it, the it's the cameras. I mean, it's getting that way. They have multiple cameras now, and announcers, and pin announcers, and speed shots, and. Why did the the Dixieland race in Kakana? They had like eleven cameras. Oh my! Drones. That was a cool drone shot last night. Yes, those are kind of neat. What a great gig that is to be a drone a drone driver uh, for I these like. racing uh, uh, streaming races. Oh my God, they're great. They, Got to know what you're doing because you certainly don't want to crash the drone while the race is going on. No kidding. Yeah, and there are actually laws and things that you have to abide by whenever you're flying a drone too. You can't just be some old Gumby picking it up and flying it. I uh, was at a race last week where they had a drone pilot, and, uh, geez, that thing was all over the place. And, uh, you know, I, I never saw the the work that the guy did. But the, the one that worked for CBS at Slinger was really good. Oh, hey, by the way, speaking of which, it sounds like uh, there's going to be another drone at Slinger. They're coming back. SRX will be uh, uh, making a trip back to Slinger Speedway this year. It'll be on a Thursday night. It'll be on ESPN. It's July the 25th. Mark your calendars now. Uh, big time show comebacks. You know, the only thing, I don't have a concern, right? There is no concern. But I would like to know who we're going to be watching race. Uh, for, for all I know, Dan, they only have announced one or two drivers, right? Initially, I've seen just Haley Deegan and Bobby Labonte for SRX this year. They said they have over 40 drivers interested. You know, they they got to put them in different events. There's only a few that run the whole schedule. Uh, I'm sure Stewart will probably be back. I mean, that'll be coming out. They've kind of been releasing this out kind of in waves. It has a uh-huh. races and drivers. So we'll see as it comes on. But they said they had over 40 interested. And a lot of the NASCAR guys, you know, seem to really picked up on it. I mean, I'm thinking maybe Harvick might be part of it. You Harvick, know, I can, yeah. Kenseth, you know, maybe Kenseth will come back. I mean, he did some last year. Matt, you know, I did uh, shoot him a, a text this morning and ask him what his uh, plan was. And, of course, he has, he'll has he say, oh, I, I didn't see it until after your show was over. Yeah, yeah, I know. I understand. But uh, it would be nice if Matt could come back. You get the feeling that uh, Harvick is going to be part of this thing. It's, that's got Harvick written all over it, doesn't it? It really does. A lot of these guys, it, it's nice. It's a six-race deal. It's kind of for fun. It's on Thursday night. It's kind of what we got into racing for. It's all about fun, and it makes sense. Dan Margetta's in uh, Wisconsin, so is uh, Brian Schmidt, and uh, PJ is in uh, Florida right now, in beautiful Pensacola, Florida, where it started raining. We're going to come back with uh, a guy that made a name for himself in NASCAR, a cheesehead. We'll be right back. 
After capturing five of a possible six points last week, the Milwaukee Admirals will travel to Grand Rapids for a Friday night game. To the left dot, Gurianov shoots, and he scores! Dennis Gurianov with the game winner! Pre-game coverage at 5.30, face-off at 6 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliable and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company in the heart of Wisconsin is outfitted with the -the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's Company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at wagnerautomotive.com. Hey, Matthew, give me a hand with this tree. Yeah, let's get a real tree this year. Hey, leave that fake tree in the box under the basement steps this year. Get a real tree from PMF Landscape on River Road in West Bend. Any kind of real tree imaginable, up to 18 feet. A huge assortment of Christmas decorations, including wreaths in three sizes, cemetery wreaths, festive global hanging ornaments, bows, garland roping, and more. Stop in seven days a week during the holiday season, have refreshments, and check everything out. How about a PMF gift certificate? The perfect gift. PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 South River Road in West Bend. Call them, 262-338-8800. Dad, our tree from PMF Landscape looks great. Brian Ranke here from Sunday Night Football on Westwood One. We've got an AFC battle this week when the Los Angeles Chargers host the Baltimore Ravens. Justin Herbert and the Bolts fell to 4-6 and six last Sunday and yet another one-score loss. Now they host Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, who are 8-3 and three and coming off a 10-day rest. Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner joins me this week. It's the Ravens at the Chargers on Sunday Night Football. Coverage starts at 6.30 on Milwaukee's home for the NFL. 97-3, the game. Well, last week we had Bobby Dotter on the program to catch up with the former cheesehead who's made his way into NASCAR and uh, has been there for several years. Today we're going to, I was just thinking about this, of everybody that's ever been from the state of Wisconsin, who would you say has the most NASCAR championship rings? Well, that's a pretty easy answer if you really think about it. Ron Malik, a native of Franklin, Wisconsin, was with Jimmy Johnson for all seven of his championships. He was the car chief on the car. What a what a responsibility to put a car underneath uh, Jimmy Johnson for all those years. Ron joins us since he has retired from Hendrick Motorsports and moved to Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, joining us from a lovely snowfall in Elkhart Lake. Ron, great to have you on the program. Thanks for being Good to be with you guys, too. Good morning here. <laughs> a little snowy compared <laughs> to probably where you're at, Todd. <laughs> uh, there you go. Ron, I, you know, there, there are probably kids that uh, are that may be listening that might say, boy, that would be kind of neat to be a guy from the Milwaukee area that just decided to go down and become a NASCAR championship car chief. Uh, it's not exactly something you can plan for in advance, but uh, it's funny how the turn of a friendly card worked in your in your favor, and uh, you you go from Wisconsin and you end up on the stage in uh, at the NASCAR banquet getting a ring. Uh, kind of move us through how your career got started in racing, would you? Yeah, like uh, my father um, living in Franklin, we lived near Hills Corner Speedway, the dirt track there, and uh, sure miss it. Uh, yeah. Um, that he, he raced there a couple times, and we'd go there on Saturday nights, obviously. But then we uh, moved into the go-kart ranks out at Dousman when I was like nine years old, and my brother was two years older than me. He started a couple years before me, and we ran go-karts. Um, had a great time out there, great learning experience, met a lot of people. Um, ran go-karts out there till I was about 15, and then um, 
started messing around with uh, some stock cars, some American stock car series. I ran some Lake Geneva local stuff at first, and then I did a couple of the touring races, and um, obviously I was young and <laughs> didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't good at getting sponsorship either, <laughs> but uh, ah. it was a good learning <laughs> Yeah, it was a good no learning kidding. experience, and I and I met a lot of people, and and through that I met the Shills. I met Al Shield Jr. at Lake Geneva, and uh, Albert obviously, and um, I started helping them with their cars after I had a a short stint in a late model at Slinger a few times and at Lake Geneva. But uh, that's where my professional racing career started. I worked at Pro Power Racing Engines with Bill Schlieper, and worked for Al Shield preparing his car back in 94, 95 area. And you got to be good friends with Al Shield Jr., uh, basically the same age, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same age. And uh, we, were, we were good friends, and it was a great, great time and a great learning experience, great people. Uh, I would never replace that experience I had with them. Al, he raced as much as he could, and it was just, it was fun racing. And uh, we'd go to, you know, three different tracks a week, and, and he was obviously very talented and did really well. And it was just great people to hang out with. And I, and I learned so much from being with that family that's obviously been in motorsports for so long. And, hey, Ron, now, being, from Frank, go ahead, man. being from Franklin, you used to ride your, your bike over and check out the local race shops, too, to check out the race cars, right? Yeah, yeah. I was very fortunate. I lived right down the street from uh, Jerry Gunderman's ASA shop back in the early 80s when uh, Mark Martin, Ted Musgrave, all those guys ran for him. And I'd ride my bike and look through the fence and someday wish to work on those cars and then obviously watch them uh, at the fair park and things like that. Uh, so it, that's it was, uh, <laughs> that was, that was my urge. <laughs> oh man. Now somewhere along the line, while you were hanging out with the shills, uh, Jimmy Johnson, uh, moved to Wisconsin to further his racing career. And if I remember right, uh, when he got here, here, uh, he never, he had never, been on an oval track before did I, did I remember that story right yeah basically i think he did a test in uh for someone in michigan they dr- let him drive one of the cars through a gm deal but he really had never driven a asphalt stock car before and uh, herzogs wanted to get into the asa series um with general motors backing and um so he found the best team they could buy and uh howie leto obviously was in charge of that the old baker motorsports team and that became herzog motorsports where jimmy got his start in asa Uh, boy that's the second time now we've heard about baker uh enterprises in the last week because uh, that's the way bobby dotter also got his start several drivers did for uh, terry baker over there and uh, so that's they bought Terry Baker out, and it became Herzog Motorsports, right? And then how did you get uh, uh, connected with them? So, yeah, that's a funny story. Um, So Jimmy had to move to Wisconsin to work on these cars, to work with Howie to learn how to work on race cars and understand them better. And he really didn't know anybody in Wisconsin but Bill Schlieper from off-road racing. He had built some engines for them um, for the off-road trucks. So he stopped in his shop and asked Bill if he knew anybody good that would be willing to work on an asa team and and uh basically <laughs> live with him and teach him the ways and ropes of uh racing and that's how um i got to opportunity to meet howie leto and he seemed to like me enough to give me an opportunity to <laughs> work for him and that's how i started and that's how i met jimmy johnson basically on a professional uh level as far as getting into motorsports a professional but then you live together right yeah, yeah. He's like, you want to get an apartment together? I don't, I don't want to pay for it all by myself. So we got a apartment um, out in Sussex because that's where we finally moved the shop. We started on Lincoln Avenue uh, in West Dallas, and then we got a um, a building out in Sussex that we uh, continued working out of for the next two years after that. So. Um, if I remember, did did you guys have a place like on Highway 100 in Oklahoma area? Uh. No, it was the shop was down in Lincoln, Lincoln in yeah. West Dallas, yeah. uh, right okay. across from I don't know the Penny Bar or something. <laughs> I forget the name of it. <laughs> we used to uh, touch there. So okay, I don't know why I I thought you guys lived in that area, but apparently not. Okay, so Sussex. No, we our shop was our shop was off 164 out in Sussex, and that's okay. where we lived off Capitol Drive. 
All right. And uh, you yep. were there, and Jimmy seemed to pick up on that uh, oval track thing pretty quickly, huh? Yeah, he, uh, you know, he had a natural talent. He'd show up these tracks he'd never been to and adjust real quickly. Um, obviously, he had a great mentor with Howie, um, being able to uh, get rookie drivers, <laughs> usually tuned in pretty quickly. And obviously, Howie made smart decisions. You know, he, he taught me a lot about being patient and, and calm. <laughs> When we're young, uh, we don't we're not good at that, and that honestly stuck with me my whole racing career. That's fantastic. We're talking with Ron Malik, who uh, was many years with uh, Jimmy Johnson and all of his championships, and we're gonna follow from uh, Pewaukee to uh, Charlotte when we come back. Hang in there with us. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrood outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's the, the, the Dan Patrick Show. Dan Patrick. Yeah. It feels like C.J. Stroud, they're still learning, trying to figure him out. They they figure out every quarterback at some point. Just give me the ball and I'm going to make a play. Those kind of, kind of things, you know, eight weeks into the future, it's like, what happened? I thought you'd just <laughs> give me the ball and make me play. Like, oh, what happened? I thought we just had to give you the ball and then you would make a play. The Dan Patrick Show. Dan and the Danettes and you. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. I love Dan Patrick. We are talking with uh, Ron Malik, who... Uh, lived and worked in Wisconsin and suddenly found himself heading to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina area because uh, uh, I guess the overall plan was to uh, move Jimmy down there and uh, continue his career um, with the same group that basically bought out Bakers, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. The Herzogs wanted to be in the NASCAR rank, so <clears throat> they... Uh, started basically a, a Bush team from, from scratch, which is difficult, as we all know. Um, but they hired an experienced crew, she, crew chief, Tony Liberati, and um, hired a bunch of good people. And we started off from, yeah, basically nothing, bought a, some cars from Roush and um, turned them into Chevrolets and, and uh, ran pretty decent for what we had as far as resources and knowledge base. You know, there were some really competitive cars back then. That's when they would get 50, 55 cars for the Bush series and everything else. So just to run competitive back then was difficult. He didn't really win championships up here uh, before you guys moved down there. He, he won a couple of races, right? He won a couple of ASA races. Yeah. He won the rookie of the year in ASA and in, <clears throat> in 98, but that was, that was it. Um, obviously ASA was very competitive also probably the best drivers in the country also. Um, sure. And racing was just different back then. It, it, it was not that it's not hard right now, but we all know it was a little bit more competitive when you got 50 guys out there instead of 35. Yeah, in fact, that first race, the first Bush race, I think, was at Milwaukee, like in 99. It was a unsponsored type car number 92 with red, white, and blue, and I think you guys finished top 10, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, he did really well there because obviously he had some experience there from running ASA, and um, – did a couple races that year also for ST Motorsports. Um, 
I was fortunate enough to be on the pit crew for some of that, those races. I actually was on the pit crew for uh, Adam Petty for one race down at Gateway in 99. I jacked the car, if you can believe that. Um, wow. And, uh, yeah, um, we got started. Uh, he had a few opportunities to get his feet wet in the Bush Series, and the owners um, dove in head first to start that team, you know, late 99, mid-99. Basically, they bought a building and started to assemble a team. And then at the end of the year, uh, Jimmy and I moved down there. I got an opportunity. Tony gave me an opportunity to work for him. He didn't let me do much at first. He didn't trust late model guys, as he would call them. <laughs> but uh, I, I had to earn his respect. And um, at first, he would only, only let me uh, work on the engine. And I don't know why, but I had I was only with engine experience. So he let me do that. And then obviously, it expanded after that. But you know, getting back to, you know, getting into motorsports or, you know, getting involved with the, with racing, I had a very well-rounded background being involved with all aspects, you know, car setup, car assembly, engine assembly, all that good stuff. So that's really hard to find, especially back then and really hard to find now. So, I mean, I guess I was lucky to get all that, you know, experience or exposed to all that before I actually went down there. So take us through that transition now. You, you're with Herzog, you're Jimmy Johnson doing that. How did that transition go from running the, you know, Bush Series to getting the call to go up to Hendrick Motorsports to start that team with Jimmy Johnson in the Cup Series? Well, <clears throat> that was that was a big change. <laughs> so from the Bush experience, I had a – with Tony Liberati, he was very, I guess, he was a lot like they are at Hendrick. He liked perfection. He liked things done right. He liked order. So when I went and interviewed at um, at Hendrick, I actually interviewed with Brian Weissel and Robbie Loomis because there was no crew chief hired at the time uh, when I interviewed. And those guys, you know, they, they knew I had worked with Jimmy. They knew my background. Luckily, Robbie Loomis, you know, he understood the ASA series and understood what it took to uh, – get to the point to come down south so he was a good guy to know and a good interview um getting in there but it was intimidating to say the least you're going to go work for basically a, a crew of people that have worked for jeff gordon who have won all these races and you know championships and you're just some basically kid from wisconsin who lucked his way onto a bush team and now you're saying you can work at the highest level of motorsports and it was intimidating luckily they kind of put together a team that was, I'm not going to say misfits, but younger guys that really didn't have a lot of experience on that team. I think they did it on purpose, basically, let's see what happens type of thing, because they weren't even sure about Jimmy's capabilities at those point, at that point. Uh -huh. So even with, with Chad, you know, he wasn't really a proven crew chief. He didn't really do much. He had worked, obviously, at Hendrick before for Jeff, but it was just like a group of young kids and obviously a young driver that had a lot of excitement and obviously we had a lot of drive and we could be whipped pretty hard in order to work um, and get things right. And we definitely did that. And obviously throughout the years it um, evolved. I worked with multiple people, obviously fifties of people probably at the end. Oh, um, and it, and it still got the same results due to that same structure we always had. You know, I remember very well when you guys first got started, our our uh, late partner, Ed Kluka, went and visited the shop, and uh, he came back uh, that next week and talked about uh, what he saw on this radio show, and he says, it just has a really cool vibe. It's just a bunch of young guys. They're playing rock and roll and having a good time, and it's a very loose atmosphere over there, and uh, they are all young and going to come up at the same time and gel at the same time, and I'll be damned, but didn't that work out nicely? It did, yeah, and um Obviously, you know, a big major part of what I did, I think, was kept the team gelling like that and get us through those hard times, you know. It wasn't always, you know, winning races and everything else. And I'm going to be honest, when we weren't winning races, even second or third places were pretty sad days around our team. So wow. you still have to keep everybody motivated, you know. It, it's not easy. And um, I think that was, you know, like I said, a major part of what I did that, Probably Chad's not the best at. He's good at really driving, 
<laughs> driving people to work and um, driving perfection. And we're still human beings, and we still had to enjoy the good times and get through the bad times. Mm, amazing. And there was a lot more good times than there were bad times. We're talking with Ron Malik, the car chief for uh, Jimmy Johnson They're during his entire time with uh, Hendrick Motorsports. And uh, they both kind of retired at the same time. We're going to come back and talk to Ron one more segment. Hang in there with us. Check this out. This is The Herd. You're excited. I'm excited. With Colin Cowherd. They are, as we said last Friday, this was going to be a Dallas win and with a chance to be a dominating win. They do a lot of things Buffalo does. You're not sure what you get week to week. The Cowboys have become the ultimate tease. About every third weekend, they look like the greatest football team ever created. This is The Herd. Weekdays, 3 to 6 on the Big 920 in your iHeartRadio app. Hey, Matthew, give me a hand with this tree. Yeah, let's get a real tree this year. Hey, leave that fake tree in the box under the basement steps this year. Get a real tree from PMF Landscape on River Road in West Bend. Any kind of real tree imaginable, up to 18 feet. A huge assortment of Christmas decorations, including wreaths in three sizes, cemetery wreaths, festive global hanging ornaments, bows, garland roping, and more. Stop in seven days a week during the holiday season, have refreshments, and check everything out. How about a PMF gift certificate? The perfect gift. PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 South River Road in West Bend. Call them, 262-338-8800. Dad, our tree from PMF Landscape looks great. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit BonafideSafe.com. Brian Ranke here from Sunday Night Football on Westwood One. We've got an AFC battle this week when the Los Angeles Chargers host the Baltimore Ravens. Justin Herbert and the Bolts fell to 4-6 and six last Sunday and yet another one-score loss. Now they host Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, who are 8-3 and three and coming off a 10-day rest. Hall of Fame quarterback Kurt Warner joins me this week. It's the Ravens at the Chargers on Sunday Night Football. Coverage starts at 6.30 on Milwaukee's home for the NFL. 97-3, the game. We're talking with Ron Malik, who has uh, made a NASCAR career and moved back to Wisconsin. And uh, I guess after seven championships, uh, Jimmy's career is he's deciding that it might be time to, to hang it up. And uh, here you are, been uh, work, working down there with Jimmy your whole career. It's, it must have been a kind of an odd day when he talks about retirement. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I mean, you start questioning, you know, what else does he have to do or what was he trying to prove by racing still, you know, and uh, at some point, like I said, you, you just got to enjoy some things besides racing or other forms of racing at least <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and, and spend time with your family and other things, you know, and I don't blame him for retiring one bit. Obviously, the sports changed a lot and uh, it's just a different different style of racing different type of car and obviously he wanted to get his feet wet as a car owner now or a team owner and give that an opportunity has the phone uh, one quick question about that before you get on the family thing has the phone rang yet from him now that he's over at legacy motorsports asking you to come out of retirement and help him over there at all (laughs) uh i've talked to him a couple (laughs) times (laughs) um yeah i I was pretty firm when I said, you know, I moved back up here for a reason (laughs) and uh, didn't want to go back down there. Um, I've been back to Charlotte since I left. I'm actually going to go down there this December and visit, but I haven't been, I haven't been back and, and I don't, I don't miss that. I really don't miss that, that rat race. I like other forms of motorsports more now. Um, And I like it on the less professional level, I guess. I was going to ask you, what was it that was kind of the linchpin for you to know that you were going to retire, that this, that you were done with that? Um, you know, honestly, I, I didn't mind working in the shop down there and managing every, the, the guys working on the cars. The biggest thing is um, I wanted to raise my son up here in the Midwest, and my wife likes it up here also, and uh, we like motorsports up here. Um, 
we like that we're 10 minutes away from a sprint car track on Saturday nights, you know, and, and we like the seasons, you know, I want to teach my kid how to do donuts out on the snow this afternoon, you know? <laughs> well, I was going to ask you too. Now, how did you and Ashley meet? Ashley, it is, is quite accomplished in her own right. Yeah, we met at the racetrack. Well, I saw her at the race track. She worked for Jamie McMurray on his cup team and we met there and started dating but uh yeah we just gel we're two racers we grew up the same way she grew up racing sprint cars and obviously i grew up racing asphalt and we know about each each of that so we we enjoy racing in general and we like the midwest she likes the seasons also she enjoyed going and cutting down our christmas tree yesterday and and now it's snowing and and like i said we're going to teach our son how to endure the winter enjoy the summer (laughs) So wait, I didn't see you out at the track at Road America this year. You said you were busy building a house. So what, did, what does it look like in the future? And you said you like sprint car racing. Any chance we're going to see you out in a sprint car in the future? Oh, I, w- I would love to try a sprint car. I've talked about it with her buying one at some point and just trying it. You know, even at, you know, just Plymouth, maybe not a 410. But, uh, yeah, I would love the opportunity to, to try to drive one. She says she's not going to anymore, but uh, you never know. We could get her behind the wheel again um and teach me how to drive one of those things but no like i said there's there's so many things around here i mean there's four dirt tracks within an hour of my house and uh it's just it's fun and obviously i'm right down the street from slinger and the milwaukee mile and a lot of things i grew up with that i want to enjoy and enjoy with my family there's a guy that doesn't live too terribly far from you that rents those sprint cars out i believe uh our own josh balicki got behind the wheel and he got hooked after doing that you have to give him a call yeah yeah about it <laughs> you never know that's that's I am you don't old, usually though. hear the I'll guy saying he, he's going to have his wife teach him about how to drive a sprint car what <laughs> that's pretty you good. don't hear that every day do you Oh, no, no, not at all. <clears throat> well, it's uh, it's been a wonderful career. Racing has been pretty good to you. Uh, how many rings? Let's see, you got seven rings from Jimmy Johnson. I don't suppose that's all you have, huh? No, I have I have multiple from Brickyard 400, Daytona 500, um, they Coke yeah. 600s. Um, and then I, yeah, my wife even has a, a ring from the 24 Hours of Lamar. So we have a hell of a collection. Very proud of it. Um, someday, hopefully, my son can uh, enjoy them as much as we enjoy them and understand how much work it was to get to that point. The kid's going to be racers? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, he seems to like it so far. He likes dirt late models. But... Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, there we go. He's, he, he knows where yeah. his uh, priorities are then. I like that's, that. So how many <laughs> yeah. kids do you have, Ron? Just one. One little boy. Yeah, he just turned four and... Hopefully get him in a go-kart at five and see how he likes it. Um, I'm not going to push him too hard. Obviously, if he doesn't want to do it, we can uh, play golf or something. <laughs> no, yeah, there you go. And uh, your own racing this year, uh, you didn't race as much as you have in the past, right? No, I was uh, I was helping some other people out with their cars, and I might do some SCCA racing this year. I've got an old cup car that I could run or – I still have my uh, all-sport Roush Trans Am car I could run also. So the runoffs are coming to Road America this year uh, in October of of 24. So that's always fun to do, and, and maybe I'll end up doing that next year. We're talking to uh, Ron Malik, one of the really good guys in the sport, and uh, never forgot. Not only ne- didn't forget that he's from Wisconsin, he's he was a Wisconsin guy the whole time. He was just living in Carolina for several years, and uh, and uh, being uh, as an accomplished a crew chief, uh, I mean, as a car chief as you could possibly be, and coming back with championships and uh, and a lifelong friendship with Jimmy Johnson. I suppose you still talk to the old boy, huh? Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, I I think we're gonna go down for the Hall of Fame induction in January and and see how that goes. But yeah, he's same person, just in a different mode in his life. Uh, obviously, team ownership stressful. <laughs> so yeah. uh, I know he's trying to work to get that as good as he can because he doesn't like to lose. All right. Well, Ron, it was great catching up with you, and uh, best of luck. Uh, if you don't mind, we'll uh, we'll check in on you now and again and see how things are going. Definitely. Yeah, thanks for having me on.
All right, Ron Malik, formerly of Franklin, now living up in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. We'll sneak away for a break. We've got uh, some results from around the world of uh, dirt track and some some more of that uh, asphalt stuff when we come back. After capturing five of a possible six points last week, the Milwaukee Admirals will travel to Grand Rapids for a Friday night game. To the left dot, Gurionov shoots, and he scores! Dennis Gurionov with the game winner! Pre-game coverage at 5.30, face-off at 6 on the Big 920 in your iHeartRadio app. Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need with Miller's Sales and Service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Hey, Matthew, give me a hand with this tree. Yeah, let's get a real tree this year. Hey, leave that fake tree in the box under the basement steps this year. Get a real tree from PMF Landscape on River Road in West Bend. Any kind of real tree imaginable, up to 18 feet. A huge assortment of Christmas decorations, including wreaths in three sizes, cemetery wreaths, festive global hanging ornaments, bows, garland roping, and more. Stop in seven days a week during the holiday season, have refreshments, and check everything out. How about a PMF gift certificate? The perfect gift. PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 South River Road in West Bend. Call them, 262-338-8800. Dad, our tree from PMF Landscape looks great. It's a bird. It's a plane. The the, the Dan Patrick Show. Dan Patrick. Yeah. You have an owner in Carolina, David Tepper. He's a billionaire. Well, they're smarter than us. They have a billion dollars. Now, they might be smart in one facet, but that doesn't mean that they can run a football team. Or they can run a football team if they let others do their job. The Dan Patrick Show. Dan and the Danettes and you. Weekday mornings, 8 to 11 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. And now the LTN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. Not a whole heck of a lot of dirt racing this week as the Thanksgiving week was upon us, but there was some. The USAC National Midgets were center stage all week. We'll start last week, Sunday night, the rained out, postponed Hangtown 100 from Placerville, California for the USAC National Midgets. Kyle Larson had a start, I believe it was 16th in that race. Drove his way through the field. Now it was 100 laps on the little quarter mile, but made the move with a caution right at the end and took the win to win one of the, that's one of the bigger races of the year for the USAC Midgets, uh, picking up the Hangtown 100. The crew moved up to Merced, California Tuesday night, and Spencer Baston picked up the win there for the USAC National Midgets. They had another night of racing on Wednesday at Merced. Logan Seavey grabbed the win there, and then they all headed up to Ventura, California for the big Turkey Night Grand Prix, which was held last night, but there were a couple other events in between there. Friday night, Yuma, Arizona, the Cocoa Pot Speedway, the Turkey Classic Harvest Hustle. Say that five times fast. For the IMCA classes in the IMCA Modifieds, Tom Barry Jr. was your winner. The stock cars was Scott Salka. Night number two of the Turkey Classic Harvest Hustle at Coco Pa saw Tom Barry Jr. win it again, and Scott Salka picked up the double. So those two guys. Sluka. Sounds like Kluka. Yeah. yeah. It's almost spelled the same way as well. Yeah. It sure is. Uh, also yesterday in Cochrane, Georgia, the crate race in USA, 604 crates had their gobbler, $10,000 to win. Mark Whitener from Florida picked up the win there. Swainsboro, Georgia, another 604 crate race. The Turkey 100, another $10,000 on the line. And Cody Overton picked up the win there. That is Brandon Overton's brother. And the big event of the weekend was the Turkey Night Grand Prix in Ventura, California for the USAC National Midgets, their final race of the season. And Kyle Larson grabbed, I believe that's his third Turkey Night. If you remember way back when he won his first Turkey Night, he proclaimed that was one of the biggest wins of his life. That was before he had won a Chili Bowl, saying that was one of the biggest wins of his life. Well, I think this was his fourth Turkey Night Grand Prix that he he picked up the win on. The 2023 champion was Logan Seavey for the USAC Midgets, and that 
put a bow on their season. The midget guys have off now, and they'll start getting their stuff polished and ready for the Chili Bowl, which is really not all that far away, if you think about it, in the middle of January. That is everything for the week. On to the paved results. As mentioned at the top of the show here, last night, the annual Bill Bigley Senior Memorial at the Freedom Factory down in Bradenton, Florida. Jet Nolan was your winner on that. Johnny Sauter was second. Uh, other local notables, Derek Krause, sixth. Luke Fenhouse, eighth. Ty Majeski, ninth. And Polly Schaefer Jr. was 12th. Jeff Storm uh, ran really well early on, had some mechanical problems, and he ended up finishing 21st. Lots of turkey action in the asphalt side, too, Brian. Uh, they had the 50th Turkey Derby, and that was at the uh, Wall Stadium Speedway in New Jersey. Tour type modifieds, Matt Hirschman, he picked up $15,000 for that win. The eighth annual Turkey Shoot at the Tucson Speedway. Super late model had uh, two features, and Cody Vanderwall won one, and Weston Marthorpe won the second one. And uh, let's see, then we had the 23rd annual Thanksgiving Classic at the Southern National Motorsports Park in Kenley, North Carolina. That is today, and you can stream that on RacingAmerica.tv. And, of course, the Snowball Derby is next weekend here at Five Flag Speedway, which is where I'm at. Rain is starting to uh, taper off, and it looks like there's going to be some cars doing some practice yet today to prepare mm-hmm. for that big one next weekend. Or a week a week in advance. By the way, you mentioned Weston Marthaler, who's uh, a 16-year-old driver from Minnesota that won out here in Tucson. Um, he drives for Kelly Byers of Linden Station, Wisconsin, and they are out there for the week at, at, to uh, get this kid some uh, some seat time. And then, depending on how he does it, it sounds like it's going very well. They're going to come back out here for the Chili Willie. That's a great name for a race, isn't it? Which is coming up. So uh, it's pretty neat that, uh, that we got a little Wisconsin contingent out here in Arizona for that one too. So. Fellers run at the Dells and other tracks. He's won at Slinger in a Legend car. He's in some Legend races, and I think he's had a. Super late metal starts in number one hundred. That's how you remember the guy, you know. Well, he ran, yeah, Midwest Trucks too. I thought, right? Yes, yes, he's been he's done a lot, and uh, he's been and uh, he's been helped along the way by uh, Kelly Byers, and uh, that's a pretty good uh, guy to have in your corner. Um, outstanding, and uh, it sounds like you know it's this is the time of year when things wind down, but there's some pretty big races. We do have. Uh, Brian, but towards the end of the year, isn't that when they head to uh, St. Louis and Tulsa? Yeah, the Dome is going to be uh, the, the Dome at uh, America Center down in St. Louis. That's the week after PRI. So you have the Snowball Derby next week, and then you have PRI where everybody takes off for that week, and then you have the Dome, and then, yeah, over the New Year is when they get Tulsa ready. They run all those micro sprints and go-kart type stuff, and then the Chili Bowl is right after that, and, my gosh, there's no off season. They, did I see that they did finally raise the the uh, purse at the Chili Bowl? That was the biggest complaint uh, for for the big name guys that were down there. It was as prestigious a race as you could get, but it, it never really paid very much. I think they're doing better there, aren't they? Right. I believe they did increase it. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I believe they did increase it throughout the field so that it makes it a little bit more worth your while to go down there and participate in it. But that it's the prestige of that race. You're still going to get 300 plus cars show up for that, regardless of what the payout is. And speaking of midgets, this young lady who has shown such uh, fantastic promise. Uh, let's see if I get her name right. Jade Avedigian. Is that her name? Yep. She's got signed to a contract. She's going to be in the uh, Toyota pipeline now. Yeah. She's been running Toyota stuff. She's been racing with Keith Coons motorsports. She won the, extreme midget championship which is uh the world racing group tied to the world of outlaws they have a a a midget series that runs eh, about 12 races or so and she ran all of usac and then won the championship in that division i think she won some power eye races too over the last couple of years but she's definitely the up-and-comer she's the one everybody has their eye on and we'll see if she can progress she still has to win that coveted first usac race though that's always the toughest nut to crack um so we'll see how that go i'm sure she's gonna run it again next season we know how old she is yeah, she's like 16, I think, right? 16, 17. Yeah, I believe so, yeah. And she looks pretty good. I mean, from what I've seen so far, she's done quite well. And that Toyota deal is going to have her in a bunch of different series. One of them is this TGR Cup, which is Toyota Gazoo Racing Cup. They ran at Road America this year. Was it with IMSA, Ryan? It was all the Toyota cars, remember? Yes, yep. Yeah, I believe that. So she'll be doing some road racing. That'll be different. 
Oh my! Well, she's got some talent, and I will see how how good she is as uh, Toyota continues to develop her. We're going to sneak away for a break. We've got a a, a bunch of NASCAR stuff. We're going to go over when we come back. So you want to hang in there? We'll be right. Back. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs, all backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is out fitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive Miller Sales and Service is the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer for customer service and satisfaction. Serving the area since 1939, Miller's is located on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. As the Midwest's number one Bravo trailer dealer, Miller's has all kinds of Bravo trailers from 8 feet to 48 feet in stock. They also have a selection of B&B utility and dump trailers, reliable and Chilton open aluminum and steel trailers. With over 50 pre-owned low mileage cars, trucks, and SUVs, Miller's has just the vehicle you are looking for. Miller's also carries a full line of Alumacraft boats and Manitou pontoon boats, complete with Evinrude outboards. Why not buy from racers who know what racers want and need? With Miller's sales and service on the corner of Highway 57 and K in Random Lake. Call Jerry, Tom, or Brad Miller today at 920-994-4358. That's Miller's Sales and Service, 920-994-4358. Check this out. This is The Herd. You're excited. I'm excited. With Colin Cowherd. Patriots South, the Houston Texans. Patriots Detroit. Uh, Patriots Miami. That didn't work. And Patriots West in the desert. <clears throat> the Raiders didn't work. Anybody think Tom Brady was the reason it worked? Tom Brady was the rare superstar. He didn't get enough. This is The Herd. Weekdays 3 to 6 on the Big 920 in your iHeartRadio app. And welcome back to LTN, the final segment of the program here. A couple things going on in the world of NASCAR racing. By the way, just to straighten it out, Jade Avedisian, who we were just talking about, is uh, 17 years old. So, uh, Yeah, she was born a month before my daughter. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's signing a national <laughs> contract. Isn't that just amazing? Uh, they're going to be racing. Uh, racing. They're gonna, there's going to be a test of short track. Uh, it's going to be to see what kind of different aero packages they can use at short tracks this week. It's going to be right here in Phoenix. And uh, I was planning on going over there, but I just found out that it's the test is closed to most media. I think I understand what that means. Uh, just the, the big boys will be there. You know, you should see some reports, but that that's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to find out. I hope they come with more than just aero package. We need a, a little more horsepower on those short tracks. It would be a little make what a difference that would make. Huh? And stop shifting. I think that would be the biggest thing. If they could find out a way so that these new transmissions, you, you can't constantly shift during a lap. I mean, you're at Richmond Raceway and, and you find out they're shifting five times a lap. I mean, that's crazy. On a, on a little short track. I mean, it's crazy. Is right. Stupid. There's six guys that are going to be there. It's two from each manufacturer. I think one the manufacturer picked and one the team's pick. So for Toyota, it'll be Christopher Bell and Eric Jones. Ford's going to have Ryan Blaney and Chris Buescher. And Chevy will have Corey LaJoy and Kyle Larson. Interesting group. Uh, Justin Haley got married this week. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't make this up if I tried. He married a girl whose name is Haley. So he's married to Haley Haley now. Honest to God, I'm not lying to you. Uh, there's there's one you don't see very often. And uh, there's the rumor is in this next TV contract that they're working out, uh, the rumor is that they want to have at least 10 races streamed per year in the contract, 
which means, you know, you might be like me and have figured out a way to avoid spending money on, on a peacock right now. Well, eh, unfortunately, uh, then you're going to miss 10 races. You, you know, they're painting oh. you in a corner. You want to watch a race, you're going to have to pay eventually. It may not even just be peacock. It might be a separate, like, Amazon. You know, like, Prime is what the NFL does in their Thursday night games. Or it could be Turner's got a streaming service. I mean, they may have up to 10 races to give these things in the middle. Yeah, these, yeah well, so. peacock was a kind of an example. I just don't know like how that, that helps. I mean, I, I, I mean, unless, unless NASCAR is able... You know, I don't know how I don't know how they would be okay with that. I mean, to me, that looks like you're taking a step back, you know, and streaming your stuff. I'll be honest, I haven't watched a single Thursday night NFL game because I can't walk in and click on my TV and turn it on. But at so the I same haven't... time, Brian, if the Olympics are going to negate them being on broadcast TV, they're going to need to have an option, right? Well, right, but you know, right, and that's where I'm saying, you know, get away. From, you know, if there's a way you can get away from NBC, because there's plenty of other networks out there. NBC is the only one that does the Olympics, so. You know, I just don't know how NASCAR would be okay with that if you want to be this top-of-the-line sports. I mean, you don't see other series doing that for their, you know, main events. And it's not like – we're not like baseball and basketball where we have 30 different franchises that all play at the same time. You know, we have one event once a week, and the fact that you're not able to fit that into, you know, over-the-air TV, which most of the time is nothing but crap on anyway, it blows my mind. Yeah. It is kind of amazing. Um, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the SRX, the nationally televised SRX series, is coming back to Slinger Speedway for the second time. It'll be on Thursday, the 25th of July. Um, we will have uh, ticket information for you as soon as it is available. Um, I'm sure that they are going to uh, make those tickets available early in the deal here. I don't know. I haven't talked to Todd about it yet. but uh, Looking uh, at the first week of December. First week, of de- so it is coming quickly. Well, you'll be able to get them. We'll let you know uh, when if, if you're interested in getting those tickets. Uh, PJ, the latest racing nuggets. Uh, we know that you had uh, Kenny Schrader on recently, but uh, you've got a, a, a three-headed monster you're going to be talking to. <laughs> yes, on Tuesday it'll drop. It's with uh, Travis Quapple and his sons Carson and Caden Quapple, and that'll be available this coming Tuesday. You, Everywhere you get your podcasts. That's right. At all major platforms, just like your LTN podcast, iHeart, and all of those, you know. It's just if you want it, you will find it. That's for sure. Uh, boy, the, uh, Travis Quapple is, is just one of the truly good guys in this sport, isn't he? He is. And he's a good talker, and I think that's kind of one of his... His superpowers is he's a really good networker and is really good about staying in touch with people. And I think that that has always helped move the needle for his career and for his kids, too. He started racing when I was the announcer at Madison when he was 19 years old and won the championship out at Madison uh, when at a very young age. And uh, went from went from there, to say the least. Former Truck Series champion, and uh, he made a career in in cup racing, and now he's trying to advance his sons into the into the sport, and it's a pretty neat story and fun to watch. So that'll be uh, in Vegas when he was running that 28 car. It was, it was wrapped up like the old Fred Lorenzen car that year. I was out there with uh, coworkers from my regular job at the race, and we were coming down an escalator, and he was going up the other side, and he kind of took my hat, and you know, people were like, hey, that guy took your hat, and he walked back up, and I got it. We laughed, and they found out he was a NASCAR guy. They were all impressed. The NASCAR guy took my hat up the escalator. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, he's uh, quite a guy. And who didn't call him Kavapel when he first started, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you I remember when you yelled at Roger Penske. When he was, remember we were in Vegas? He was driving yes. a 27 car. Yes, I, we were going, and another one, we were going up the escalator when he was coming down or something like that. The best driver you got! Yeah, yeah, right. Well, uh, maybe not. You know, he did have some pretty good guys over there. Hey, uh, we're really happy that you guys tuned in for the program today. We love it when you do that, and uh, uh, we'll hopefully you'll do it the whole off season. We're only taking off Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Other than that, we'll be here all off season. So be sure to tune in. Hey, real race cars have doors, even if they do climb in through the windows. Let's talk NASCAR is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our engineer is Matt Losey. For all of us involved with the program. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next week, everybody. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. 
Find us at Facebook.com slash LTN Radio Network. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.